thank you for choosing to listen to Sophia's birth story. My birth story is my birthright, my rite of passage into this world. And like all birth stories, this is personal, sensitive and powerful when spoken out loud. What I'm transmitting through this podcast is not so much about knowledge or know-how as a therapist, but a very personal process of embodiment from conception to birth. Before sharing our birth stories out loud, either about giving birth or being born, I always advise people to take a moment to ground yourself, to feel into whether it is the right moment either to speak or to listen to content such as this. Are you feeling particularly vulnerable right now? Are you pregnant or about to give birth perhaps? Did you experience your own birth traumatically? If so, you might want to give yourself a moment to check in, to see if you have the space for this right now. If you're driving, feeding or multitasking while listening to this, please be aware that it's a deep dive and that it can be emotional. If you feel overwhelmed by listening to any of the content, please allow yourself to stop, pause, or come back to it later. And if any questions do show up for you, please feel free to reach out and get in touch. Thank you for listening in. The themes or topics explored during each integrative aquatic therapy training are not random. They refer specifically to the actual developmental stage of the embryo. During the prenatal journey, for example, a lot of intensity or high tone responses show up around the theme of conception. I learned that around four weeks, a heart begins to beat for the first time, long before a brain has developed. This primal, unique heart pulse coming into motion also coincides with our discovery. Did I feel welcome when my parents first realized I was coming in? Was I perceived as a mistake, kept as a hidden secret perhaps, or somebody else in my case persuaded me it was a good idea to choose to be born? I would argue that many of these themes, like a subliminal lifelong sense of grief derived from our sense of separation from source or unity, which is often disguised as a depression later in life, or the heavy constricting sense of coming into a confined body, the conditional experience of love in the earthly realm, are experienced to some degree by all of us, even if most of us have no reason to return to these. Numbing their effect is the more popular approach. And yet it is these first impressions of life that get repeated over and over again from generation to generation as they continue to remain in the shadows of our unconscious. More specific individual patterns show up if there has been a major event in the life of a pregnant mother or her immediate environment. Becoming aware of how these early impressions continue to inform our perceptions and sensations or our interpretation of them as adults gave me precious insights into how a baby could be experiencing their own pregnancy. Little did I realize then that these explorations of my own embodiment would later inform the way I hold space as a doula for babies and their families from conception onwards. Two very important realizations happened for me personally and for my career. I began to see birth from a baby's perspective. And I realized without a doubt that because we've all been born, birth impacts everyone, whether we have children or not. I guess I've already insinuated enough that my calling to this work was the result of my realizing I had a twin that vanished. What I didn't know then is that a twin appears to have vanished during the first weeks of gestation. And it is actually 
a fairly common occurrence with some researchers claiming an up to 45% chance in natural conceptions and even up to 75% chance that this will happen in IVF fertilizations. I guess I've already insinuated enough that my calling to this work was the result of my realizing I had a twin that vanished. What this means is that a twin appears to have vanished during the first weeks of gestation. It is actually a fairly common occurrence, with some researchers claiming an up to 45% chance in natural conceptions and a much higher 75% chance in IVF fertilizations. It is impossible for me to put into words for the container of this podcast, the journey I've been on to accept, process, and integrate my twin story. That story deserves a book or podcast of its own. The reason I think it is of value to really explore the impact of vanishing twin syndrome and to communicate the results to future families is the emotional and psychological impact it has on surviving twins and their capacity to live life fully. I wrote the following paragraph during the prenatal journey. I love you. My love for you runs so deep, it permeates every layer of my existence. With you, I need no words. I feel what you feel. What is mine is yours. If you existed, it would probably work the other way around too. But you don't. You never did. I can't hear you. I don't see you but I feel your presence in the very fabric of my being once having been entwined by our entry into this life together. But my life has been marked by your absence rather than your presence. The mystery of a weight I have carried in my heart defined by loss, grief, aloneness, abandonment, guilt, and excruciating rage that has taken me a lifetime so far to fathom Seldom have I rejoiced in your existence. Never have I called upon you for guidance or support. You're forever absent. I'm forever longing, forever repeating that early moment of loss in utero, forever hoping that somehow you will stay. The moment you went away, absorbed by nature's intelligence, which knows who might survive and who will certainly not, just as surely I now dive deep into the waters of creation to unravel my story. For it is you who made certain I made it through. By telling my story, you come alive. Thank you for listening to my podcast. Knowing that you did makes me feel proud and a little vulnerable at the same time. I'm happy to receive your questions or feedback. If you would like to support my work, you can do so through a one-off donation or by subscribing to the podcast. All the details of how to do so are in this episode description. I am of course available to support you individually, online, or to welcome you in person on retreat on the beautiful island of Corfu, Greece. If you own a business, or if you're part of an organization, I might be able to present an inspirational talk for your audience, or even develop a training program for your staff. Thank you for considering all options, and thank you for listening in.